In this lecture snippet, I'm continuing examining a master file table record, and I want to look at the 30 attribute or the file name attribute within a particular file. And I've looked in previous videos, I found the header information, which I'm highlighting right there. I've also seen the standard information attribute or the 10 attribute, and I've highlighted that there. Now I want to work with the 30 attribute, which actually goes on to the next half of this sector. And the 30 attribute is going to focus in on the file name. And so what I want to point out is a couple things about file names before I begin. First off, there's a short file name format. This 8.3 will represent 8 characters is the maximum on the left hand side, 3 characters are on the, is the maximum on the right hand side of my dot. And so example is findme.txt. So that actually has 6 characters on the left hand side and then it has the 3 characters on the right hand side. So it fits within this short file name format and it is a maximum of eight characters on the left hand side, three characters on the right hand side. Now any file that's larger than that is going to be considered a long file name. And in the event that we have a long file name, we're going to have typically two of these file name or 30 attributes listed for this master file table record. And so I want to come down here and just show you an example at the bottom of this text file that I have open. And here's an example of a file name with a long file name format. And you can see find me with spaces is quite a bit larger than the eight characters on the left hand side. Windows will actually convert that over to a short file name and you can see that it actually capitalized all the letters and went to this first six characters that were actual text characters and then it went ahead and put the tilde and then it put a number one. Now it'll be a number one if it's the first file that has this same short name conversion. If there happens to be more than one file with the same short name conversion, then we would see a two and then it would follow with corresponding numbers after that. So it'll actually convert that over and have two different 30 attributes. One of them will show the short file name and one of them will show the actual long file name. So let's go ahead and take a look at this particular file that I'm working with. So I can see that the 30 attribute is going to start here and it typically follows right after the 10 attribute. And I've got the 30 attribute. Now, four to five spots over or offset four to five relative to the beginning of this attribute, we're going to find the length of this attribute itself. And you can see that I'm going to highlight the fourth and fifth offset from there and that's going to represent 70 in hexadecimal and it's going to represent 112 in decimal meaning we have 112 bytes that will make up this 30 or file name attribute. If I go over 32 spaces to 39 spaces or offset 20 to 27 and I'm going to go ahead and highlight that there is I'm going to actually find a repeat of the create date and time that we saw in the previous attribute. It also will have a repeat of the last modified date and time as well as the last access date and time and then also the record update date and time. Now if you notice that this particular file none of these timestamps have actually been updated and they're typically going to stay the same from the time the file was created. However it is a repeat of some of that information. I'm actually going to go ahead and hit page down now and I want to show you the rest of this sector. You can see that it ended with the RTF and so that is where the 30 attribute ends. In fact it actually ends on this line right there. That's going to be the end of my 30 attribute. And so I'm going to go ahead and push the page up key and we can see this particular file. Now I actually have a file on the hard drive that's called findmewithspaces.rtf and I'm going to go ahead and pull out that information. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter and it will allow me to look for a new sector. And I've already found this file before and written down the sector. It's at 6, in my case, 644 9606. And I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And I can see this is where my file is in the MFT file. And then I've got the zero. Down here you'll see the find me. If I hit page down, you'll find the rest of it. There's actually a two on this tilde because there was another file named similar to that. And you can see the dot RTF in here. So this is the 30 attribute. Since it doesn't format well with the sector view, I'm actually going to highlight the beginning of the sector. This is the offset from the beginning of the actual hard drive. And I'm going to go ahead and right click and choose copy. And I'm going to do a control C to quit out of this. And I'm going to go ahead and redo the command sudo hex edit. This time I'm not going to use the dash S for the sector view. And I'm going to go ahead and do SDB1. Pull up the same information that I have. And when I hit enter this time, it's actually going to ask me for the position rather than the sector. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and after the 0x for the hexadecimal information, I'm going to do paste. And now if I hit enter, it actually will take me you can see at the very bottom to the beginning of this file. And now if I use my arrow keys down, I can pull up this information and I don't see it split between sectors. And so this gives me a better view to look at this file. So you can see find me, 
the tilde, and then the two. And since this is a long file name, I will have two of the 30 attributes of the file name attributes. The first one will start right here, and I'm going to go ahead and scroll down, and it will actually end right there. And you can see I have a 7, 8 for my value. And the 7, 8 is going to let me know that it is going to be, if I were to convert that over to a decimal number, 120 bytes in length. And I've went ahead and highlighted that all for me so I can see this particular file name. Now this file name has 230 attributes. And so if I scroll down, I'm going to go ahead and use the arrow key here and scroll down, I actually have another 30 attribute here. And so here's my 30 attribute, the second 30 attribute. And in this case, you'll see there's an 88 on offset 4 to 5. The 88 is going to let me know it's 136 bytes long, so it is going to be a little bit larger. And I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here, and I'll highlight that is where that one's actually going to end, this whole entire 30 attribute. And again, I will see a repeat of some of the information. So on the second 30 attribute, I still will have a repeat of the actual create date and time, last, last modified date and time, last access, the record update. And now at offset 5a, for both of these attributes, I want to point out, which is 90 spots from the beginning of each attribute, I will have the short file name, and then I will also have the long file name. So in this case, you'll see, here's my file, find me with spaces .rtf. And so it actually listed the long file name, and up here you'll find that it actually listed the short file name. So I'll have a repeat of 30 attributes, one with the short file name, and one with the long file name. And both of those file names are going to be 90 spots over from the beginning of the 30 attribute or offset 5a. So this concludes the video on the file name attribute, also known as the 30 attribute.